Hey everyone, I'm Mike Jacoby from Lucid, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up this Triton Sphere demonstration. Now, it's very similar to the one that we show at trade shows and exhibitions. The purpose of this demo is to highlight how our Sphere cameras featuring Sony Sensware sensors can be used to detect fake plastic coffee beans from real coffee beans. Now, this is very similar how you can use Sweer cameras to detect unwanted particulates in food and other materials. In this video, I hope that I can show you some of the steps that are needed. It's not going to be exactly what you specifically need, but this is just a general overview, and I'll go over some of the major components that you need. Let's get started. All right, here are the basic components you need. You'll need one of Lucid's Sweer cameras. In this video, we'll use the Triton Sweer camera with Sony's 1.3 megapixel IMX990 Sensweer sensor. You'll also need a Sweer lens. Now, there are many options out there, but here we'll be using a Tamron SMA11 F12 lens that has a spectral range of 400 to 1700 nanometers. To connect the camera to the PC, you'll need a M12 Ethernet cable and a PoE network interface card. We'll also need an M8 GPIO cable to trigger the camera with the light. For lighting, we'll be using Smart Vision's LZE300 linear light with a 1450 nanometer wavelength illumination. We'll use the LLM LED light manager controller, which will synchronize the camera trigger with the light. We also have two 5-pin M12 cables needed for controlling and powering the light. One last thing that's not shown here is a power supply to light the controller and light. Now, for our mounting frame, it's really up to you on what parts you want to use. So, for this section, thanks to the power of video editing, I'm just going to speed through it. For your assembly frame, you can find a wide assortment of parts on many engineering e-commerce sites. For this one, we'll be using a metal breadboard with some common construction rails, tubes, and fasteners. Yours, of course, you can use whatever you like as long as it matches your camera and lighting mounting connections. Before I mount the camera, I'll attach our tripod mount adapter. This provides us with a quarter inch screw hole. Note that the Triton has other screw holes for mounting that don't require the tripod adapter. It's up to you how you'd like to mount it. Once I've finished attaching the tripod adapter to the camera, I'll mount the camera to the top bar of the metal frame with the tripod connection. Here I simply screw in the camera until it's nice and snug. Next, I'll attach the Sweer lens to the camera. Now I'll attach the 1450 nanometer linear light. This light uses T-slots for a physical connection. So I need to slide each side into the slot plate and then tighten the screws for a snug fit. Again, your lights might be different, so be sure to check your manual. So here is the general layout with the camera on top and the light sitting below it. It's time to connect all the wires now. First, I'll attach the Ethernet M12 cable to the camera's Ethernet port. Then we'll attach the M8 GPIO cable to the camera's GPIO port. I've already connected our PoE network interface card to the host PC, so I'll now connect the RJ45 side of the Ethernet M12 cable. Now for the light. We'll connect their 5-pin M12 cable, the one with the male and female connectors, to the light first. And once that is secured, we will connect the other end to the lighting control box. In this example, we'll connect it to the Q1 port. Lighting controllers such as this one allows you to drive multiple lights and more easily control and manage different lights in an application. This one would allow us to control up to four zones of illumination, but in our example, we'll just be using one light. Next, we'll connect the power to the controller, which also powers the light, using another one of their M12 cables, which has a female connector on one end and open lead wires on the other. We'll need to connect the 24 volt brown wire and the blue ground wire to the controller. We'll also need to connect the camera's GPIO cable's black ground wire to the controller, as well as the purple wire, which is line three on the GPIO and is a non-isolated channel that will carry the trigger signal to activate the light. If you're wondering where to find all this pin and wiring information, it can be found in either the data sheets or manuals of the products, so make sure to check yours if you're using different components. Okay, time to connect the wires to the terminal blocks on the controller. First, we'll need to attach the brown and blue wire 
to the first terminal block. We'll first pop off the power block and connect the 24 volt brown wire to the first slot. We'll slide it in, then we'll secure it with the locking screw. Now make sure to screw it in all the way until it's tight. We'll do the same for the blue wire, which is ground for the light. But before we secure it in, we'll need to add the camera's GPIO black wire, which is also ground, and add it to the same slot. So we'll twist the two wires together first, then we'll slide it into the slot and screw it down. Make sure you get a couple of good twists of the wires together so that the two are properly wrapped around each other. These can be a bit finicky and sometimes they can fall out if you don't slide it all the way in and also if you don't make sure the screw lock is locked all the way down. So just take your time and be patient. We'll slide it in. Then we'll secure it with the locking screw. As I mentioned earlier, we also have to attach the purple GPIO wire, line 3, to the first slot of the second larger terminal block, which is digital input 1. It's easier if we first remove the block. Again, make sure you get as much of the metal part of the wire in all the way in to the slot and lock it in real tight. Okay, all done. Now let's reattach the terminal blocks back onto the controller. I know this isn't the most elegant solution and you'll probably want to tape off the other exposed wires and maybe even solder the two ground wires together. But for this video, it's enough to give you an idea of how to wire it all up to power the light and trigger the light from the camera. So we still need to finish the power connection to the controller and light. We'll be attaching this T2 power supply to the other end of the M12 cable. This part can be very different depending on your other power needs in your application, and users are more than welcome to customize their own cabling and cable connections. As long as it matches the specifications and requirements for your components, the world of cabling is your oyster. All right. Now, once I plug in the other end to a power port, the LED on the light will flash red a few times and then settle on green. This LED tells us the light is receiving power and ready to go. A green light on the controller will also go on, showing that it has power as well. We have to configure the light on the controller via a web browser that connects to the controller's IP address. And to do that, we'll connect an Ethernet cable to the controller's port and then to the PC. The IP address is usually printed on the controller itself, and if you're having trouble connecting, please refer to your controller's manual for more specific information. Once we know the IP address, fire up your favorite web browser on the PC and enter the controller's IP address. Here I'm just going to set the light to shine at 100% when it's triggered on, then click save. Oh look at that! Our settings are saved! Of course, your controller's settings may differ, so always check the manual for the correct settings. And that's it for the hardware. Great job, everyone. And now let's move on to the software side of things. Install our Arena SDK and open up our Arena View GUI. Connect to the Triton Sphere by toggling the connection button here. Then click the Features tab and search for Line in the Filter field. Under Line Selector, select Line 3, which if you recall is the purple GPIO wire. Change Line Mode to Output because we want to output a signal to the controller, and change Line Inverter to True because our line activation voltage is set to low and we want to invert that. Next we need to set Line Source to User Output 0. Finally, we need to define what User Output 0 is, so search for User Output in the Filter field, with user output 0 already selected, change user output value to true. This will activate the light. Now if we turn on the camera, we'll see that it's working. But what's that strobing effect? Well, we need to turn off auto exposure as it seems to be having trouble figuring out the best exposure time for the sphere light. So we'll just switch exposure auto to off. 
And there we go. We can easily see the plastic coffee beans, which are the darker ones, from the real coffee beans, the lighter ones. Now, probably at this point, your lens may not be focused or at the right aperture. So change it to get the sharpest image. And here we are, success. Here's how my setup looks like with everything connected. And I'm sure yours is looking a lot nicer. So you might think we're all done, but we're not quite done with this video. Well, going into Arena View to change all the settings is a quick and easy way to test it out. There is another way of doing it that I'd like to show, which is through Jupyter Labs, which we already have built into Arena View. When you launch Arena View, a Jupyter tab will open up. You must first copy and paste the access token to enter it, which is available on a separate console window. We'll just copy the token and paste it in here and click Login. Again, thanks to the power of video editing, the Jupyter Notebook is already created. This does exactly what we did in Arena View, but in a much easier and cleaner way where we don't have to search for individual settings, which we need to change one at a time. Here we can simply execute the notebook, which initializes the Triton Sphere camera, applies the same settings we did in Arena View to trigger the light from the camera, and loads up a viewer window. Now, if you'd like to get a copy of this code, I've put in a link to our Jupyter Lab Resource Center on our website, thinklucid.com. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you found this one insightful. Thanks for watching and stay lucid.